The one last sort of area of animal abilities that I want to just share with you is virtue. This is an exciting new frontier in the study of animal behavior. Virtue is something that we generally don't associate with non-humans. Animals restrain themselves. Um, social living really I think is the origin of virtuous behavior. It, it pays to treat others well if you're going to live in a society. Uh, there's kin selection theories to explain that, a, genetics, a genetically based theory as to why you're helping copies of your genes, but I don't think we're thinking about that when we help others. I don't think they are either. I don't know of animals that study up on Darwinian fitness and evolutionary theory. There's also a reciprocal altruism, which it helps to explain behavior where you're helping others who are not relatives. There are fish species, cichlid fish, who help raise young of other fish who are nesting, um, and they're not even related to them, so they're not even helping copies of their own genes. Many birds do this. In, ma in mammals, there's uh, midwifery, there's wet nursing, there's na nannying, there's babysitting in different kinds of animals. So there's a lot of helping and a lot of benevolent, beneficent behavior around, around reproduction. Um, but a really interesting new area is this idea of, to use the jargon, inequity aversion, to use a more familiar phrase, unfairness awareness. Studies of monkeys and dogs so far have shown that they have this, this objection to unequal treatment. So, uh, for instance, with a monkey study, they, capuchin monkeys, they like cucumbers. So if I feed a slice of cucumber to you, just pretend you're a capuchin monkey, and a slice of cucumber to you, you're happy to accept it, and you may be actually trading in a, t uh, a token for that. But the minute I switch the preferred grapes to you, uh, you will no longer be satisfied with a cucumber, because you can observe that so-and-so here is getting grapes, and, well, I'm doing the same thing, why aren't I getting grapes? And you can watch YouTube videos of this sort of, this sort of sense of uh, indignance, if you like. Uh, do monkeys feel indignant? I think it's an emotion they can feel. But there's certainly there's an objection to the inequality, and they, they, the monkey who's not getting the grapes refuses to continue cooperating in the, in the study. Similarly with dogs, these are dogs who are selected who can, will offer a paw to shake a hand. This study was done in Hungary, and I always find it a little bit humbling to see dogs who understand a different language that I don't. <laughs> the dogs are receiving hum Hungarian commands, and they're responding quite casually. It's like, well, they're Hungarian dogs. They know Hungarian. I don't. Uh, two dogs standing next to each other will happily offer a paw 30 times in a row uh, if there's no rewards. But the minute you, uh, you introduce rewards, it, there's the potential for it to get Machiavellian. And if you just reward one dog, the other dog will only go about 10 or 12 trials before uh, refusing to raise the paw and the dog will start to look away and just generally I'm not going to be any more part of this because I can see there's inequity and I don't like it. That's anthropomorphizing but that's probably the sort of thinking that, that's going on in these, animals, in these animals minds. They're social animals, they live in a society and they have an expectation of a certain fair, fair treatment deserves fair reward. One other just anecdotal example of, of what I would say is virtuous behavior, an illustration is, is, a, is um, a monkey, uh, actually a Japanese macaque, same species as this, named Mozu, who was born with a terrible physical disability. She had no hands and no feet. And if you've watched enough nature documentaries with doom and gloom and nature red and tooth and claw, and uh, it's a harsh, cruel, earnest place, and if you have anything wrong with you, you're not likely to live another day because a predator is going to get you, you're going to predict that this monkey's not going to live very long. Uh, but in fact, Mozu lived a, a, a full life and she raised five young. And of course, she didn't do it by herself. She did it because she was, lived in a society and she benefited from the beneficence of others who brought food and helped her get what she needed. I suspect she was probably ki came from a high-ranking rank, high family, which doesn't hurt in macaque society. We have parallels in our own societies. Uh, but nonetheless, despite this terrible disability, she lived a productive and meaningful life for uh, a macaque monkey.